City don't want Grealish. Rail to pursue Awa. Arsenal have big plans for the summer, a transfer roundup, plus this week's Friday feels all coming up on today's One Football Daily News. As I'm your host, Angelina Kelly, let's get into it. First up and with transfer rumours flying around, I think it was only a matter of time really before Jack Grealish's name was brought up. Now of course he has had a brilliant season so far with Aston Villa and he's actually really been so vital in helping them in their campaign as they actually currently sit in ninth position and have not been doing too shabby. But of course, like I say, there are going to be rumours and in the past he's been linked with both Manchester clubs but reportedly Manchester City will be taking a step back from their interest in Grealish. Although manager Pep Guardiola is of course a long term admirer of Grealish and he has been linked with the club on so many occasions they're not really going in that direction instead City want to get themselves a deep line midfielder a left back and a striker and it's safe to say Grealish doesn't really fit into any of these categories of course it does make sense when you look at Manchester City's team they're absolutely flying at the moment there's no doubt about that and when you look at the positions that Grealish normally occupies that left wing or attacking midfield I can't really see Guardiola swapping the likes of Raheem Sterling or Kevin De Bruyne etc for Grealish as much as he is a talented player and I'm sure that this will be music to other Premier League clubs ears. And speaking of other Premier League clubs it was a big night in the Premier League last night as Chelsea got a 1-0 victory over Liverpool. They are back in the top four and they have now gone 11 games across all competitions unbeaten in a row. This is massive for Chelsea but for Liverpool it is not looking good. This is their fifth loss in a row at Anfield and for Jurgen Klopp never mind trying to defend that title. I think that's gone completely and utterly out of the window. They'll be lucky if they get top four at this rate. Things are just getting worse for Liverpool and I think everybody was shocked when Klopp chose to sub off top goal scorer Mo Salah. He departed in I think what you could describe as a little bit of a huff. He was definitely not happy and I don't think fans are either. Of course there were claims for that second half penalty when Roberto Firmino shot hit N'Golo Kante's hand but they were denied the penalty. How they were denied when you look back at the images of Kante's hand I'm not too sure but you can definitely understand their frustrations but apart from that Chelsea were pretty much running the show. And speaking Speaking of handballs, it was a crazy game as Fulham were beaten one goal to nil by Spurs after Josh Meyer's equaliser was disallowed. Fulham were naturally upset about the controversial video assistant referee decision. Basically, in the lead up to Meyer's goal, Mario Lamina was penalised for handball. But when you look back at the images, his arm was by his side. I'm not really sure what the player could have done to avoid it. And of course, at the end of the game, Scott Parker did express his frustrations. And you can understand why managers and players are getting more and more upset about these decisions because when you look at at the N'Golo Kante situation, it just doesn't seem to make sense. Luckily for Spurs, they did record consecutive Premier League victories for the first time since November, but perhaps this game should have ended in a draw. Next up, over to Real Madrid, and they have reportedly reignited their interest in Leon midfielder Hussein Awa. Now, of course, all of the news around Real Madrid is how that club are trying to get to the front of the queue to sign Kylian Mbappe or Erling Haaland, or maybe both, who knows, but Zinedine Zidane is keeping a close eye on 22-year-old Awa. This comes as the club are looking to refresh their midfield as they are very much still reliant on the form and fitness of a 35-year-old Luka Modric. Awa has had a great season so far in Lyon's campaign to try and knock PSG off their league and perch and so far he already has six goals. Despite being so young the player has already managed to take quite a strong role in the leadership at Lyon and he has been eyed by Zidane for his ability to launch attacks and to drift out to the left when needed. And with the player getting his senior debut for France late last year he seems to be getting noticed more and more for his talent. However this one is not going to be plain sailing for Real Madrid as reportedly other clubs are interested. You've got Liverpool of course with Jorginho Wijnaldum seemingly ready to depart from the club they do need some reinforcements in that area of the pitch then you've got Arsenal and Juventus they did try to get the player last year it didn't work out so they are going to try again this summer however the French connection could give Real Madrid that little bit of an edge of course Awa has said that Zidane is his idol in football and Zidane is clearly interested in Awa and also the link between the two clubs now Real Madrid did purchase Mariano from Lyon and they're hoping to try and use him as a make weight in the deal now due to the amount of interest in the player like I mentioned before and the fact that Lyon's president is apparently not willing to budge on the 60 million euro price tag that he's got on our it looks like Real Madrid are going to have to do a player plus cash deal but if the powers that be 
at Real Madrid do manage to get Mbappe or Haaland, there's not going to be much money left. Now, of course, Real Madrid do have other players that they could offer in swap deals, but if the club also wants to sign David Alaba as well, they're really going to have to search those piggy banks and get that money together if they also want Awa as well. Next up, and with the summer transfer window still a few months away, Arsenal are already making plans for their transfers, and it looks like this will involve six players. Some of these players will be arriving and some will be heading for the exit door. Among those departing is midfielder Lucas Torreira, who is currently on loan at Atletico Madrid, and there is already talk of a permanent departure possibly to Fiorentina. Another player that seems set to depart is Alexandre Lacazette, who I did mention earlier in the week on one of the dailies, and it seems like providing that the right price tag is met, they are willing to let him go. And then, of course, there is Hector Bellerin, who has been linked for quite a while with a move away from Arsenal. And of course, regarding that right back position, it looks like Arsenal do want to bring in Brighton's Tariq Lamptey, but Mikel Arteta is also in the market for a defender and a striker. Reportedly, the man that Arsenal want is Odson Eduard from Celtic. Now, the price tag is 25 million euros if he is set to depart in the summer, and reportedly, the North London club have already made moves to make this happen. Regarding defenders, Arsenal have already offloaded the likes of Mustafi and Sequatis in January, but Arteta could also be set to lose the likes of Callum Chambers, David Luiz and Dino Mavropanos. This would leave Arsenal with the likes of Gabriel, Pablo Mari, Rob Holding and William Saliba. Therefore, they are looking for another player in RB Leipzig's Ibrahima Konate. Konate is having a great season so far and the fact that so many clubs across Europe, not just Arsenal, are interested in him does really speak volumes about how good he is of a player. But even if Arsenal don't get him, if they can manage to get rid of a few players and at least bring one or two of these names in, then surely that would be a massive positive for the club and their fans. And next we have our transfer roundup. This is where I take a look at some of the other news and transfers going on in the footballing world. And first up, if Newcastle United are to sack Steve Bruce, he is reportedly entitled to £4 million in compensation. It's going to be a very busy April for Athletic Club Bilbao as they have two Copa del Rey finals in 13 days. Yes, you heard me correctly. They have their first final on the 4th of April, which is the 2020 Copa del Rey final. And then on the 17th of April, they have the 2021 final. And for their manager, this could mean that he could end up winning three Copa del Rey titles in a row as he actually won the 2019 Copa del Rey title with Valencia. Napoli have reportedly reduced their asking price for Kalido Koulibaly to around 45 million euros and it's still looking like Bayern Munich are the front runners for the player. And finally, the Jamaican Football Federation are reportedly trying to get citizenship for numerous high-profile players, including the likes of Ivan Tomi, Damari Gray, Andre Gray, Mason Holgate, etc. As a lot of these players from the top two flights of English football are also eligible to represent the country. And since they don't seem to be getting any call-ups to England, the Jamaican Football Federation want these players to represent them as they try to get to the 2022 World Cup. Up. And last but by no means least, we have Friday Feels. This is where I take a look and give some predictions on some of the weekend's football and you guys can give your predictions in the comment section below. First up, we've got the Manchester Derby, Manchester City against Manchester United. I think that City will win this one, to be honest. I am feeling very, very nervous, especially with the fact that David De Gea will not be in net. It will be Dean Henderson. Hopefully he has a good game, but I see Manchester City winning this one, three goals to one. And next we've got the Madrid Derby as Atletico Madrid take on Real Madrid. Now, Real Madrid haven't been doing too bad recently. Atletico have stumbled a little bit, especially with that loss against Chelsea, but Real Madrid are struggling with their injuries. I'm not even too sure if they've got a striker for this game, so I think that Atletico Madrid will have a comfortable 2-0 victory. And finally, we have got Bayern Munich against Borussia Dortmund. Now, don't get me wrong, Dortmund are a great side and they've got some great players, but I do not think that they are going to be enough to beat Bayern Munich. Maybe Haaland will get the first goal, who knows, but I am confident that Bayern Munich will get a 2-1 victory. So that's everything for today's One Football Daily News. Check out all the other content that we have got here. Have a great weekend and I will see you guys later.